I got a white Acura that drove through the entrance to the civilian side of the emergency room. There's no indication at this time that this is an intentional act. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of State of Texas. I'm Josh Hinkle. This investigation was sparked by the medical emergency you just saw. The family injured is speaking for the first time after just filing a lawsuit against the hospital in Austin. It all concerns a safety feature missing at the time at the emergency room entrance, security barriers. Industry experts demonstrate with crash tests you'll see today, something they say could prevent disaster in the future if they were required. And after our reporting, state and local leaders are already looking at ways to make that happen, as our team surveys dozens of hospitals across Central Texas and looks beyond throughout the state and country at similar crashes to determine the scope of this problem. Here's investigator Matt Grant. I was thinking, okay, so this is what dying feels like. The second I saw the car, it was just like a big bam. Nadia and Levi Bernard and their two toddlers were looking at an aquarium in the ER waiting room at the moment of impact. When the smoke cleared, their youngest, Sonny, was missing. I went to go turn off the car because I couldn't see him anywhere. And when I leaned in to go turn off the car, he was like on the floor with this trash and debris, just covered in blood. I just saw the whites of his eyes just like looking up at me. I kept asking what's going on with Sonny, what's, you know, what's going on? And um, the doctor was like, he's screaming. You hear him? That's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna be okay, Bubba. You're gonna be okay, hey? You're gonna be okay. Why did it happen to us? Why did we survive this? We really felt, considering the tragic nature of what happened, there were so many um, blessings that did occur. Um, something that it might be seen in some of the videos was the water. The vehicle it had direct impact to a very large aquarium that really, I believe, saved lives um, as it absorbed the impact. And so, you know, Thank you. Um, I thank God for intervening there and uh, giving us that protection. Three months later, Austin police were still investigating, releasing few details and little evidence in the still open case. While we don't yet know why the crash happened, experts say there's something that might have prevented it. Something St. David's North didn't have at its ER, security barriers, also known as bollards, to keep vehicles from driving through. So straight here, and then we're gonna make a right at the stop sign. Interesting though that you have a set there, but not the emergency doors over that way. They've got bollards protecting the main entrance over there. It's covered all along here. We've seen them in all shapes and sizes.
data we compiled from Textod and other sources shows in the past decade, there have been at least 85 vehicle crashes into medical facilities statewide. St. David's North had the most victims. Just weeks before that crash, two others east of Austin in Navasota and College Station. But Texas is not alone. All of these accidents are foreseeable. And because they're foreseeable and they keep happening and they happen for the same reasons, they're predictable. drive through a hospital. If you look at the video, Piedmont does not have any of these security balusters. So Good Samaritan has grabbed Rio, the older son, and is trying to move him out of the way. And here, they are actually picking up Nadia where she was lying after being plowed over by the car. For my clients, the fact that this happened to them is completely uh, unacceptable. And what they really, really want is for nobody else to have to go through what they've gone through. Does it bring you any um, consolation that bollards were installed after this happened? I started crying. I was I was really happy, really, really happy that um, they did it, and then no one else will have to suffer like we do. Um, but at the same time, it's a weird feeling. Like, why wasn't it there before? Like, why do we have to go through this? In a statement, St. David's and a few other major area hospitals did tell us they focused on safety features like security patrols and enhanced security lighting. But part of the reason some of these sites don't have barriers is because there's no state or federal requirements or even industry standards. Still, we learned there are companies pushing for new policies and safety improvements. At least one is testing a solution right here in Texas. That's coming up. If a bollard is not crash tested like we're seeing today, you have no idea whether or not it can stop the vehicle. At what speed, what size vehicle, so that's the problem. So, so it could be useless? It could be completely useless, absolutely. Typically the maximum speed a vehicle can get to in the given space of the parking lot. The company says concrete snaps easier, but compare that to a previous test of a crash-rated bollard made of high-strength steel. One of the difficult parts is there are so many different types of bollards out there and unless the owners of that building see a certificate that said that that bollard was crash tested to the standard, you would never know. How 
how are hospitals supposed to afford that? Yeah, again, I think we are asked this question all the time. It's just the cost of keeping their employees and the patient safe. The crash testing that we're doing today is a great first step to improving that safety and improving that security of a variety of different facilities. So what would it take to require hospitals to install any bollards uh, in the state? Yeah, in the state, the legislature would have to put a law in. Well, with that in mind, we sent our findings in this report to more than 50 state lawmakers, including every person on the Texas House and Senate Transportation and health-related committees. And at least a half dozen have already responded, saying this is an issue that they want to look into, even one who asked to see our data to use for their own research. Our team also reached out to local leaders here in Austin since this latest crash happened in their city. Thank y'all for covering this. I appreciate um, y'all doing this type of investigative journalism because that exactly, that this is why we need policies updated. Coming up, promises of policy changes from city council members, their emotional response after watching our report and seeing the lives impacted by this crash. When Preventing Disaster, a special edition of State of Texas continues. Generally, there, there's, a, there's added risk factors at medical facilities because you have drivers that might be on medication, you have drivers that might be in distress, they could be injured, they could be suffering a medical emergency. The Storefront Safety Council telling us why hospitals so often have become crash sites. Our combined analysis revealed more than 300 incidents nationwide in the last decade. One of those at St. David's North Austin Medical Center back in February is still under investigation by police months later. A crash report categorizes what happened at the emergency room there as an aggravated assault with a motor vehicle killing the driver and labeling it a mass casualty incident due to the number of injuries. Now, because of our team's reporting, some city council members are promising action and new safety measures could soon be required in Austin. Once again, Investigator Matt Grant. Could somebody get me a tissue? Sorry. An emotional reaction from Austin City Council member Mackenzie Kelly. Like, how do we prevent this from continuing to happen? As she watched our investigation into the deadly crash at St. David's North Austin Medical Center. One of the main reasons we're talking to you now and having this conversation is because we're hoping that it will have an impact and prevent this from happening to other people. Yes. Experts and the attorney for the Bernard family say it could have been prevented. If St. David's had crash-rated steel posts, called bollards, installed before the crash. Kelly agrees, pausing our story to tell her staff this. Can we initiate an ordinance change that requires any new builds of hospitals or places where people seek medical attention to have these types of um, protection? She calls these safety barriers an easy solution. What would you like to say to the Bernard family? Your tragedy hopefully will save others' lives and prevent that from occurring, but there is no excuse for the, the, the pain that your family has felt. Oh my gosh. Council member Vanessa Fuentes also reacting to our report. Thank y'all for covering this. I appreciate um, y'all doing this type of investigative journalism because that exactly, that this is why we need policies updated. Fuentes now also wants to require bollards, but not just at hospitals. We want all of our hospital systems, all of our critical infrastructure, our nursing facilities, anywhere where there is a lot of people moving in and out of, we need to start looking at how are they designing their buildings with safety in mind. And you're looking at possibly an ordinance that would address that? Yes. Matt, I understand Council Member Kelly has already publicly credited our investigation, filing her intent to introduce a resolution requiring bollards to be constructed at any new medical facility in Austin. Yes, and we've already heard both council members in our report have reached out to the Storefront Safety Council to, quote, collaborate on a policy in Austin. Keep in mind, this wouldn't be the first area to put bollard requirements in place. Again, the SSC has tracked at least 244 crashes at medical centers nationwide in the last decade. That number increases to more than 28,000 if you look at crashes the groups tracked with any storefront, not just hospitals. 
The SSC tells me in that time, it's worked to help pass local ordinances requiring crash-rated security barriers in business parking lots in five cities and counties, three sparked by deadly crashes. The City of Austin spokesperson tells us in part, quote, if the city decided to look into this and implement a city policy or requirement, it wouldn't impact current facilities, only future ones. And the city would likely need to amend the transportation code and look at the building code for similar facilities. Matt, we know that St. David's North installed seven bollards outside its emergency room after the crash there, so existing facilities can make that change themselves. That's correct, yes. And when we asked about any potential requirements in the future, St. David's Healthcare said it will work with policymakers and officials to ensure compliance with any new laws if they are passed. Yes, and see what St. David's has to say about the lawsuit it's now facing from the family injured there, plus new details the suit reveals about that crash and how that legal pressure could lead to more safety barriers at hospitals in the future. Coming up. Days after speaking exclusively with our team, a family of four seriously hurt in a deadly car crash at an Austin hospital has filed a lawsuit for more than a million dollars in damages. They also want the widespread installation of security barriers, or bollards, at hospital entrances. Police continue to investigate what happened in that February incident at St. David's North, but have said it was not intentional or a medical incident. The lawsuit also reveals more details alleging the driver, who died in the crash, was unfamiliar with the car and accidentally lost control. Police say autopsy and toxicology results are pending. Now the family and their attorney accuse the hospital of gross negligence, telling investigator Matt Grant bollards could have stopped the car and prevented disaster. I got a white Acura that drove through the entrance to the civilian side of the emergency room. I think I still am not super processing of everything. I think I'm still um, very much not sure what to think of it. It's been three months since Nadia Bernard, her husband Levi, and their two toddlers were inside this scene in the emergency room lobby of St. David's North Austin Medical Center. <laughs> You can see Nadia in this cell phone video being carried away. Why did it happen to us? Why did we survive this? <coughs> Their youngest two-year-old Sonny covered in hundreds of stitches after going through the car's windshield. His dad found him in the passenger footwell. He was like on the floor with this trash and debris, just covered in blood. I just saw the whites of his eyes just like looking up at me. The lawsuit claims St. David's was negligent by failing to take safety precautions already in place at its other hospitals that could have prevented the crash here at its North Austin location. Precautions like vertical security posts called bollards, which were only installed here after the crash. Our team recently traveled to the Texas A&M Transportation Institute near College Station to see testing like this showing just how effective crash-rated bollards can be at stopping the equivalent of a Dodge Ram truck going 20 miles per hour. After the crash at St. David's, a hospital official credited a large lobby fish tank for absorbing the impact and saving lives. I thank God for intervening there and uh, giving us that protection. I wish he was thanking God that there were bollards in front of the building to absorb the impact, not the Thing that attracted us to the center of the lobby. Their attorney, Sean Breen, recently recovered thick shards of aquarium glass and granite from inside the car. Now boxed up pieces of evidence in their civil case. This is where they found little Sonny laying on this. In recent days, when asked about the lawsuit the family was planning to file, St. David's acknowledged the safety of our patients and their families, as well as our employees and visitors, is always our top priority. But citing hospital policy would not comment on pending claims or litigation. For my clients, the fact that this happened to them is completely uh, unacceptable. And what they really, really want is for nobody else to have to go through what they've gone through. 
That was Matt Grant reporting. The lawsuit also criticizes St. David's for announcing a near billion dollar infrastructure investment a few years ago, but not spending a quote, very small fraction of that money on bollards at vulnerable ER entrances. We should note some St. David's locations in Central Texas we surveyed do have bollards. Again, St. David's North did not at the time of the crash. So far, St. David's has not answered any of our questions about bollards and again, has not commented on the lawsuit. You can read what it and other hospitals do have to say about security at their facilities. We reached out to every location our team visited or referenced in this investigation. Just look for a link in this story on this station's website where you can also find other interactive features about hospital crashes in Texas and across the nation. I'm Josh Hinkle. Thank you for watching this special edition of State of Texas.